Hi, I'm Aubrey Kinghorn, and I get to talk today about designing page layouts for map series, specifically in ArcGIS Pro. So I guess the first question is, what is a map series? So map series is when you take a single layout and you turn it into multiple pages showing different map extents. There are a couple of different ways to do this and a couple of different softwares you can use. Uh, ArcGIS Pro calls them a map series. ArcMap calls it data-driven pages. QGIS also has this sort of functionality, although I can't remember what they call it. Um, and so it's just a way to quickly make layouts. I'm going to be working on ArcGIS Pro because that's my primary software. But the things that I'm talking about could apply to these other softwares as well. So ArcGIS Pro supports two types of map series, a spatial map series, which creates a page for each feature in a feature class. So if I have all 50 states as a feature class, I could create a page for each state. They also have a new at ArcGIS Pro 2.6, a bookmark map series where you save or bookmark locations in a map. And then you can use those bookmarked locations as a list and that list will create each page in your map series. I think a lot of times when people design map series, they're doing it in a very functional way, a very practical way, and it sometimes feels a little formulaic. But I think you can have a lot of fun with the cartography of a map series if you exercise a little creativity and spend some time. So I have a, a few examples of some fun I've had with map series. Here are national parks in Australia by the province. Um, and they've got kind of a, a vintage national park flyer feel is what I was going for, looking at the different provinces. Uh, here is a bookmark map series taking uh, advantage of the range features and looking at different sports stadiums in the U.S. So these are two of the pages looking at NFL stadiums and NHL stadiums. And you can see that all the data is updated, but it keeps the same formatting. And then you can also have some fun with time. This is a time bookmark map series looking at populated cities um, through every five years and you can see huge differences and they can be a lot of fun to make. Since I get to create map series quite often as part of my work for Esri, I've come up with some general tips for designing a map series because unlike static maps you need to work make a design when you use a map series that will work for every single page and so that could be you're going to have changing title lengths you're going to have different different scales potentially and all of that can create a little bit of a design challenge so with that in mind my tips are to create a map series before adding any additional elements decide beforehand what needs to be dynamic and what can be static pay attention to anchor points and how elements are going to grow or shrink find good pages to check your design against and use transparent backgrounds to help elements stand out when needed um, these tips don't make a lot of sense just looking at a page. So I'd like to demo creating a map series and talk about each of them. So let me get out of PowerPoint here and open ArcGIS Pro. So here I have a layout and it's a map showing land use in Stockholm and the surrounding areas. And what I'd like to do is I have a list of bookmarks here of some areas that I'm particularly interested in their land use. And I didn't have a feature for them, so I used a bookmark. And so I'm gonna start with tip number one. And before I add a title, a legend, or anything else, I'm going to create my map series. So I go to the layout tab, map series, bookmark. I get a list of all the bookmarks in my project. I can remove, I can reorder. And I just hit okay. My map series is creative. I can see I have five pages here. This is a relatively small map series. You can do them with, I've seen them with like 60 pages before, just depending on what your use case is. One thing I particularly like about bookmark map series is that I can open the bookmarks pane here to manage bookmarks. This is kind of a bonus tip. And I can, update the extent if I wanna zoom in a little bit more on this island. I can make some changes and then I can choose to update my bookmark extent and this will be the new extent. So when I go back to that page, it shows that area, which can be really useful. The reason I create my map series before adding anything else is that there are some properties that were 
associated with different elements like legends or charts that I might want to use in this map that don't become active until I get a map series. And so I can't take advantage of them. I could add the elements and then create the map series and take advantage of those properties later. I like to create the map series first. So first thing I'm going to do is add a legend here so that we can understand what all these colors mean in terms of land use and also a chart frame. And here I want to talk about when a map should, when a map element should, sorry, a layout element should be dynamic or static. So a dynamic element will update for every single page. It's always going to show something a little bit different, whereas a static element will stay the same. So logos, for example, would always be a static element. You don't want your logo changing on every page, but things like titles, you would like to be dynamic. Most elements, at least in ArcGIS Pro, you have an option to choose whether you want them to be dynamic or static. In this case, I have a chart showing the land cover type in square kilometers. I want this to be dynamic. I want it to update for each page. And I can check by switching to another page and I can see that my chart has updated. And so this is a dynamic element. And if I were to look at the properties, I can see that it's only showing the data visible in the map frame, meaning it's dynamic. So I would like that to remain dynamic. My legend, on the other hand, is currently static. I have the option to make it dynamic so that it only shows features that are visible within the extent. So I could go over here, expand my legend, select land cover as a great example, and I can check it to only show features visible in the map extent, and you'll notice things like orchard are going to disappear. So for le the legend, I could go either way. I could have my legend be static and be the same on every single page, or I could have my legend be um, dynamic and update for each page. In this case, I think that having my legend be dynamic is more annoying than it's worth because it means that my legend's going to change ever so slightly. Elements are going to be added or taken away, and I find that annoying when it's unnecessary. So I'd like to keep my legend static in this case. So I'm gonna check off this option and then just clean up my legend a little bit, changing the order, taking off this headings option so that I don't get the word land cover twice. While I am talking about dynamic elements, I wanna go to tip number three, and that's about anchor points. So in ArcGIS Pro, the anchor point is the square that is a darker color. So you'll notice it's right here. And it is the location when I rotate an element, it'll be rotated around the anchor point. And it also determines how an element will grow or shrink. So if I have my anchor point in the upper left, which I do, that means that if new items were added to the legend, they would be added below these current items and my legend would grow down. If I had my anchor point and I switched it, and you can set your anchor point here in the format tab. Well, you can usually set your anchor point here in the format tab, but let me go here. You can also set it, ah, I had, didn't have it selected correctly. So I could change the position of my anchor point and I could make it in the lower left. And that means that new items are still added to the bottom, but my legend will get taller. And so it's important to understand as things change that your anchor point controls the method in which they grow. All right, the next thing I wanna do is add another dynamic element, which would be some text so that I know what area that I'm looking at. So I'm going to grab a text box and go to dynamic text and scroll down until I get to map series. So this is dynamic text options that I wouldn't even have available if I didn't have my map series on, which is another reason I like to create my map series first. So I'm gonna click the page name and add that as some text, clean it up a little bit. I don't really want it to say page name. Pro is just being a little, actually I think my computer is just being a little bit slow today. And so I'm going to make some changes to this text while it redraws. Just want to take my changes and make it a little bigger so that you can see it. Change the 
font to Melgan. Wow, now I can't even type. There we go. Change the font and make it bold. Presumably. Make it bold. And now I have a title that I like. However, here's where my next tip comes in, which is that you need to check that this design, particularly this title, is going to work on multiple pages since your title will be different lengths. So this title, Sondermalm, I believe, is relatively short. So, and it looks good here. But if I scroll down and I pick the page with the longest title, Stockholm, Roma Airport and surrounding area, I can see that most of that text is cut off. So this is telling me that my design is not working well for every page. So I can expand it. And I realize that I don't like this alignment. So I'm gonna go over to the text symbol and change the alignment. Make it a little bit longer because I like the way that looks better. And now I can see that this is going to work for shorter page, shorter titles, as well as my longer titles. And again, I'm sorry, my computer is just being a little slow today. I check titles here, but I also recommend if you have something like a table that's going to get longer or shorter. Um, or a scale bar that may get wider if you always want to show it as like 100 miles. That's a good thing to check too on multiple pages, particularly on your most zoomed in scale or your longest table so that you can see that it's going to work for all your pages. My final tip is to use transparency if needed. So you'll notice that this title, the background is going to change. And so here it's pretty easy to read. But if I switch down to something like this one, it's kind of hard to read because there's so much more going on behind it. So I like to use a halo here. I'm just gonna apply a really simple semi-transparent white halo with a, make it a little bit bigger. And this is gonna be a little bit easier to read. And the transparency means that it doesn't block everything else out. And I found that it works better over multiple pages. You can also apply a transparent block behind your legend or a scale bar or a north arrow as well. And I found that that works pretty well in a map series. So there you have it. Those are my tips for creating a map series. Any questions? Thank you so much, Aubrey, for your talk and your presentation. Um, we've got a question here in Slack from AJ Ellison. Um, AJ says, we had an issue with dynamic titles when a small portion of another series was visible in the extent uh, it would add both titles. Any idea how that could be resolved? Uh, so that kind of sounds like it might be a bug. So that's something that you could report back to Esri. But in the meantime, I have a good workaround for dynamic text, instead of using the title option for map series, uh, which you can use, there's also an option for value. And since the dynamic text is always driven for, uh, or the title is driven by an attribute, if you're using a spatial map series, you can get that same attribute by using the value text and you can limit it just to be a single item. So that can be a really helpful way to go. Awesome. Sweet. Thank you so much, Aubrey. And thanks to all the presenters in this first morning session. Uh, I think that'll wrap it up.